we being we're live. It's Sam and Fred. Uh, we are pairing local support. Yeah, Fred, how, how are you doing? Good weekend? Sorry? Did you have a good weekend? Oh, yes. Uh, but I, I almost spent uh, one and a half day uh, watching uh, Game of Thrones. Oh, really? Oh, really? Yeah, it's uh, uh, totally. Mm. Uh, that's uh, kind of horrible because uh, after watching the TV shows, I kind of feel like I'm I'm dreaming. Like I I, I didn't read any code. I didn't uh, write any code last weekend. <laughs> mm -hmm. oh, I mean, the Game of Thrones is a great a great show. I think it's. Um, you know, for like understanding, well, I don't know about for understanding people. I don't know, it's, it's all about, you know, how people and interacting and so on and communication, which is very important. It's very, very important. So uh, I, I wouldn't feel bad if I were you. That sounds like a good uh, good way to uh, spend time. Yeah, it's a great show. I really love the, um, I think the author's really clever. Yeah. Yeah. So, so uh, did you watch that show before? I watched, I watched uh, series one uh, on Amazon Prime. And I kind of, I bought series two and I started it and I kind of, you know, I'd already read the books and I think that the, 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 the show is good, but um, it's just, a, it's a little bit too violent now that I have kids. I think if I was, if I didn't yeah. have kids, I, I, I used to I'd love all that, but now it's kind of like, and I've, I'm, you know, so I'm kind of, what am I doing? I'm, I'm reading, I don't know, I'm, I've sort of put it, I also, it's kind of, you know, they design these shows. Uh, you know, to make you want to watch more, and it ends up taking up more and more time. So I'm kind of like I've I've put it to one side for the moment. Yes. Yeah, good stuff though. But it's uh, yeah, it's 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 really well done. Um, I just I just I just watched the Judge Dread movie, and it's got the 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 the, the queen in the Judge Dread movie is the. Do you know Judge Dread? Judge Dread. Yeah, it's Judge Dread is. Um, He's a UK uh, comic book character. There was a movie uh, with him, like, uh, last century, like, 20 years ago or something. And then there was an, a more recent movie. So, um, yeah, this was the, there was a movie in, like, 1995 with Sylvester Stallone, which was kind of okay. And then there was the more recent one in 2012, which I hadn't seen yet. I mean, I, I used to read the comic book when I was um, uh, a young man. Uh, so I watched this, th I watched this at the weekend and I quite, I actually, I quite enjoyed this. I thought it was quite, um, quite well done uh, and probably more, you know, um, was it, what is it? Ugh, I've forgotten the word now. More like the original comic book series and this, so the bad guy, as it were, in the movie is this, this woman, Lena he Hedy, and she plays, um, uh, well, I think she was in the Sarah Chronicle Chronicles, and she's Cersei Lannister in yes, Game of Thrones. Cersei. Yeah, 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 yeah. So anyway, sort of just random, random connection there. But uh, anyway, yeah, we we we've got a little bit of time before the um, elixir pairing. So um, wonder if we can finish up what we were doing on um, uh, what we were doing on the um, the Figaro and G Maps keys. I was just looking here at the. Um, uh, the log, the commit log, uh, like so, um, yeah, and I think we're, we're, we're there, the t I was just rerunning the tests locally, yes. and they all, they all seem to be passing, um, and if you want to get on the, on the, the, the branch that we're on is this rebooted one here, and if you want to get on that branch locally. Just paste that in the chat for you. Uh, and yeah, I have a feeling that what we wanted to do was to, um, let's have a look at the test. We've got that, that that's, our, that's our test. And then, now what's the, right, the, the, the code that we had is this GMAP key and we created a GMAP key helper method. Right, it's all coming back to me now. Uh, so where did that go? That would have gone in the application helper. Yeah, okay. So we've got a helper method there that gives us um, those things. Um, mm -mm. So I, I guess it's basically there. 
Um, I'm just thinking, is there anything else that we want to want to do? Do you, do, you, do is it uh, do you remember what we were doing? Is it did, does it make sense looking back at it? Uh, no. I I remember that we uh, is like the uh, test and uh, but we are what we are going to do is make the the test uh, more general, more uh, perfect. Mm -hmm. uh, there. Yes, I remember that you you uh, helped me write the helper method of the mm. mv dot rp. Let me see. Mm. Yes. So I'm I'm thinking that there's a I'm just thinking so things we might need to finish this up. Is that is the one thing at the moment the test is is kind of a little bit flawed in as much as we define well the test is going to run differently depending upon what the value set in application.yaml is so if we have our gmap api key set then the test will run through this and we effectively won't check this functionality uh, mm -hmm. at all. Um, and that's going to be, you know, we, we've got a situation here where, depending upon whether a developer has a particular file, um, a different version of the test will run. Um, so, I think that's something we want to we want to we want to address because we sort of want you know uh, so make sure all test uh, uh, all code paths run. Um, and another one I think is maybe update documentation about this. Um, yeah, uh, I think that's right. I think I also personally I want to get the I I should be able to get that um, key from somewhere. And put it back in. Um, so, I guess the thing for me to do. So, what we had here is I made this. You wrote this, and then I made it pass. So, if we follow our ping pong coding, like yes. since since I can now see maybe a more sophisticated test, probably what I should do is I should, um, you know, write the. Um, I should adjust the test to make it fail, and then you can write the code to fix it. So um, here we go. So the, oh wait, the Google Map key is included to ensure we don't get. So actually, there's two scenarios here. It's um, you know uh, we've got if the uh, GMap key is set, GMap. Let's call it Google. Google Maps API key is set. Um, that will appear in the 
right location. Um, so this this is then given I visit the, uh, uh, the home page. I think actually it's going to be given uh, the Google Maps API key is set. When I visit the home page, then I should see the Google Map in the correct location. Um, there we go. Yes. And so there's sort of a happy path and a sad one, not even there's just the two paths here. And if I take, we have the second one, which would be uh, given the Google Map API is not set. Um, there we go. I wonder if we should even mention application.yaml here. Um, given the Google Maps API key is set, um, and uh, hmm, hmm. I, I, the other thing that's on my mind here is trying to make this documentate documentation about the way in which we run the system. Um, but I'm, you know, like the way that I'm going to override and set the API key like for this step doesn't actually it's not going to um what's the word it's not going to uh it's not going to involve the application.yaml file and that's just one of the figaro things um so if the government is not set um it will not appear at all okay um so, and there's these little helper things that, there we go, create all the step definitions. I'm going to put these in map steps. Um, so does, does what I'm doing here make sense? Uh, let's see. The stack in the scenario, uh, you I mean if the Google Maps API key is not set, will not appear at all. Uh, here, by, by saying it, what, what is it? You mean the, um, the application.yama file or, or what? Well, this is what I mean, is, is that we've, we've got a number of different ways in which the API key could be set. Like if we're running in production, we could be setting it using one of the Heroku parameters or when we run it locally, it might be because we are setting it via the application.yaml YAML and Figaro is putting it in. But as far as the tests are concerned, we don't really, I, I don't think we can say. Um, and so I'm tempted to do um, this where I set it to be well, like I can manipulate the API key directly for the purposes of the test. So depending upon whether I want it set or not, and then that should mean that I'll run the two sides of the test, if that makes sense. Like so. So then I'm going to run, I want to run 92 and 97. See if that works. Cucumber features its homepage map.feature 92. And I could be adding text in here to say, you know, like uh, in application.yaml, but I think that it's probably, well, yeah, so, and in fact, I think both of these will pass uh, because this is one of those situations, and it happens quite a lot, where the functionality that we've written, you know, this, the GMAP key helper and so on, is actually more sophisticated than the test demand, or, or at least, yeah, um, so the, it, there's, there's always this danger that you write more code than you than the tests are actually needing. Um, 
yeah so they're both running now uh we'll run the whole map feature so so i've kind of i guess what i've done there i would argue is i've i've kind of improved the uh ah, and actually there uh bum, 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 bum. I guess here, I guess I can even, probably what I could do here is make this, um, I, I mean, I've got this same step here, which is, I mean, kind of, I should see the Google Map key in the. What it's really doing here is it's checking the. It should be checking the. Um, what is it that's going on? It's where we're we putting it. Control, the map. Right. In the this is the, GMap JavaScript, in the GMap script. Uh, then and it's actually what it should be is it should be then. The Google Map key should be appended to the GMAP AS script. Then the Google Map key should be appended, and then this should be uh, then should not be appended to the GS GMAP JS script. Um, and so I think what we should do there is kind of pull that along here, and that's then we'll make that not optional. We can make that into another negation there, and then I guess I'll just Okay, I'm gonna do it like that. But they're all passing. We'll just run it again. Um, but I'm just, I'm just. The reason that I'm changing that is, I quite like this rule of thumb, which is to say that we want the the name of the step to match, you know, what's actually happening as best as possible. Which is similar, similar to. You know, I want the, you know, the name of a method to describe as accurately as possible what's happening in the method. Um, so, for example, there I might say, well, is this giving me the GMAP key? Um, what this is really giving me, it's the GMAP key U URL uh, for... URL syntax. I'm not even sure of it. URL GMAP key. It's the kind of key value pair. GMAP key value for URL. And I might just jump in there and this is me kind of doing a little bit of refactoring. On the fly, so oh, should be appended. Ah, so it's telling me that the. Huh. Now, why hasn't that worked? This one's saying the Google Map key should. Ah, oh, I need a question mark there. Are you? How comfortable do you feel with regular expressions? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So what I did there was I. I forgot the question mark that made the not optional there. And so it thought that the it thought that I hadn't written this step definition. Okay. So that that that's all green. Um yeah, so I'm sort of throwing in a few things there. I've changed it around. Does does it I mean I I, I know you're kind of new to cucumber and, and capybara and so on. Does it is it making sense, or is it kind of like woo woo woo? Mm, yes, uh, uh, I can. I can understand most of the the 
I'll call it right here, it, uh, except some some keywords like um, like there is a parentheses uh, is out out of the not keyword and there is a question mark. Uh -huh. uh, also the negation uh, negation. Uh, this this I don't quite understand. Ah uh, yes. Yeah, so what's happening here, now this is part of the cucumber basic syntax, is that, so you understand in regular expressions that we have a capture group. If you've heard them called capture groups before, um, I think that's what it is, so capture group. So you get a capture group, which is parentheses, right? Mm -hmm. But then, you know, you can have a capture group like this and that would like match anything. Um, in this case, I've got a capture group that matches the presence or absence of, by, by doing it with a question mark, when we match this regular expression against uh, the, the step definition, it ends up either having this capture group filled with something or nothing. Uh, so it either matches to, um, there was a, a string that is like space not, or it's or it's nil, right? Mm -hmm. I'm matching that expression. So then, when we run this this block associated with the um, the cucumber step, it assigns the result of the capture group to this variable. So here, negation will be equal to either base not, or it'll be yeah. nil. depending on whether we came in through uh, this step or this step. Does that make sense? Yes. So then you can see that if we have, if not is a string, then we're going to go in here and we're going to expect this not to match. But if, the, if there wasn't, if, the, if, if there wasn't a not there, then the negation is going to be nil, which is false. And we end up going down here. Yes. Yeah. I see. Yeah. And so I do the same thing here with this the not and the negation there. So, and I think that the only thing that now I, I still haven't got a failing test. I mean, we've got the code. That does those two things. Um, there's other tightening up to do, which is I think that we kind of want this to be well. Before, of course, we were trying to do it with like direct CSS matches, and we couldn't find it. The whole thing is not, you know, I would like to match it so specifically that we're checking that the, um, you know, the that we could pull out this um, script source thing there. I guess what I'm tempted to do is drop in there and run, let's run, let's run this one, that's 92. Um, and see if we can find a way to get precisely the, the text. So we're in here. And we can do, can we do find script like this? No. Uh, it's, a, it's a tag. Hmm. So I'm going to look up. Can we have yes, it's a laptop. of script tag in Capybara? Uh, Page or body script. Huh. That's interesting. And this is the one that we were looking at before.
Uh, I guess, can we do all scripts here? Hmm. Hmm. For the page body, I think we were looking, remember we were looking at this before, so I did like something like 1,024, uh, 2,048. Yeah. So we can see that the script is there. Um, so we should, I mean, I guess if we say find, can we do CSS um, script? Don't find any, hmm. It's obviously there in the page. And I'm, one, I'm wondering, do we just want to, I guess if I want to make this tight, then one way to do it is just to take the, um, is just to take the thing itself and match it directly. So I could do something like this, page body uh, twiddle equals, put that in there, and then I would have to escape everything that could be, have a meaning in, um, uh, in regular expressions. It's kind of annoying because this is the kind of thing that I would, I would like Capybara to do for me. Um, I don't know if you have any eye. I guess because yeah, you're, you're you you didn't you, this, this is um you never used Capybara before so uh, and then possibly that equals and this one here uh, okay so that's that well I don't even know if this is a valid regex let's take that bar. Let's move it over a little bit. Can I, as I say, sometimes you talk about you have a problem and then you start to try and use um, regex and then you have two problems. But that, that works. And then we could do, uh, just do equals, twiddle. maybe I just took the twiddle the wrong way around. Okay. Uh, so, ah, uh, it's treating, what's it doing? It's treating the amp as a local variable, which I don't particularly want. Um, do you know if amp, is ampersand a, um, uh, uh, painful. Is ampersand a, um, does that have a meaning in regex? Are you still there? Um, lost your audio, maybe. Hey Fred, did we lose you? Yeah. Well, I'm not. It's all taking a bit long, and I'm not enjoying the options there. Capybara, check presence object tag. Uh, let's. Uh, but something is there something within, is he not script space uh, you might expect to find in the entire document hello Sam hey there Fred 
Oh, sorry, that makes me lost. No problem at all. No problem at all. Yes, I noticed that we, we lost you. Um, I think I, well, I just found some, um, uh, yeah, I've just found some, I'm not enjoying playing around with this uh, Java uh, regex. I just, the fun, the interesting thing here is, this process, I'm trying to um, use the XPath to find any of the script tags in the document, and I'm not, I'm just not finding it at all. Let's have a look. In the page body there, we've got a script tag, and this is, you know, find XPath body. Can I just do find XPath slash script? I don't know. But um, off. find and if I look for find CSS body, yeah, it finds the body. But it can't find the script tag. Hmm. Mm. Find link. No. Uh. It finds, yeah, hmm. Let's say capybara unable to find script tags. Uh, oh, is there a mm, 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 mm. visible false? Find scripts. That is just going to be the. Uh, okay, I've had this before. This is kind of a ridiculous one, I think. There's this. I, I guess it's all about you know it's expecting to be finding visible elements, and maybe we're using. Um, right, I think that this might be. I don't remember. We we started the other day, on trying to find the script tag, uh, and I worked out the CSS for what the you know source should be equal to, and it was. Um, it wasn't working. Um, it's script and it's got it's just it's source, script source, script source. That's the thing. Type text JavaScript. So I could do here like type equals text slash JavaScript. Okay, couldn't find that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. This is me attempting to find this script tag. Mm. Mm. Got four of them. And I think, can we just do all? No. Can not find any of them? What? What? I was just doing it here. Oh, it needs to be visible false. Nah. Oh. Okay. There we go. Right. I'm able to find an individual script tag there, and I could. Can I do source, or I have to do like attributes source? How do I get the attributes? Um, capybara get attributes. My CSS thing. Oh, okay, and I just do. Doors. Okay, there we go. So you see what's happening here. Yes. We're, we're grabbing grabbing that there. So what I what I really want to do to make this a a really tight test is basically check that we have. And maybe I'm making this much too tight, but oh hey Michael. Uh, um, well, Mike. Uh, we're just, um, oops, now this is, let's see, can I, in there, we've got source, I need, I need double quotes in there, syntax error of some description, what's my syntax error? Mm. 
Hmm. Doesn't like that string. I'm doing phage find CSS. It was all right with having script type equals text slash JavaScript in it. We've got double quotes on that there. And apologies, apologies to you, Ken, um, Fred, that there's not been so much coding for you so far in this. This is sort of what we were stuck on the other day. Expected it, expected a, a right. What have I done? Page find. We've got CSS there. We've got a string that goes across a long like that. Mm. There, it's got. That looks all right. Why is? Let's just take that string out. A reasonable string. No. Is there something in here that the what doesn't it like? There's something in this string that it doesn't like that has some sort of special meaning. Same key. You yes, think there are, there's you some think? A and P. Yeah, I guess it might be. We, we can try, we can experiment by removing that. Yes, it doesn't like the right. Good guess. It doesn't like the AMP. Do I need to escape the ampersand? No. Why does it not like the AMP? Ah, okay. Maybe I don't need to escape the ampersand, but I need to escape the... Okay. It doesn't like the semicolon. So it seems like semicolon has a special meaning in there. Aha! And that, in fact, actually matches. <laughs> so in principle, this will allow us, Fred, to simplify our code somewhat. Or, well, not simplify, but make it more complex. Um, so this would be now... I mean, that's, well, we'll actually, well, I guess we'll leave, we'll maybe leave that the way it's, no, no, let's put that in there. So we've got this string here. And so we would expect it not to have, what we, what we don't want in this case is it leaving it there with the empty key. And in this case, we would want it to have it, and we would like it, let's put it on the next line. Um, here, and we could just stick the actual key in there, and we kind of, we don't... Oh, by the way, that uh, is a function, apparently, of you being in the debugger, is what people say on Google. Oh, really? Okay, that's interesting. Yeah. Semicolon not being like inside a string. Okay. Oh, that's interesting. Well, I wonder if that means that we actually don't need it in here. So this makes all of the... I'm going to continue that. Uh, here we go. Let's run this. I wonder if this will pass. No, it'll go absolutely nuts. Possibly because we've escaped the semicolon when we don't need to. There. This is giving me, and it's giving me grief about... I don't know. Doesn't like... Ah, uh, that needs a trailing... Yeah! Gosh. It's not to feel a bit silly after a while with this. Um... So Michael, um, uh, Fred had done the, um, he's done some of the CS169 course, but he hasn't done particularly the Capybara. Um, so we've got this in here now, and it's saying... Someone there with you? Or? Yeah, Fred, Fred's here, uh, in, not in the room, but Fred's oh. here. Um, 
you know, I thought he was talking to someone. So, uh, well, Fred and I, I mean, this was, my idea was to work on this with Fred. So far, it's just been me working on, on this and Fred observing. Um, but so now it's saying, I mean, but there were no matches. And we're going in here. It's spec to have. So, and all of this really is to make it so that we are checking that this key is being set or not set specifically in the script rather than some random other place in the application layout. Fred, does that make sense, Fred? What, why this is a better test? Yes. Oh, glad to that. Go on. We are using the a regular expression and which can match the uh, code uh, more precisely. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Absolutely. Oh, and I think maybe the thing that we need is this. This was the critical thing: is we need to make sure that we're checking because a script, by its nature, is um, uh, is not visible. So. This is the thing that can drive us up the wall in the first instance. Let's just continue there. Yes, OK. I think that might be it. OK. So um, let's just run that, that feature. And we can maybe push the code over to you, um, Fred. And then may, maybe you can just, we can do a final refactoring of it. Um, there's a couple of the final things that we should maybe do. Yes, that's all parting now. OK. Um, and then, so yes, yeah, so get status. So let's, yeah, I guess we'll worry about those. Uh, I mean, there's also the fact that we're now, so now with this test, we're making some hits against the GMAP API key, which is specifically the 12345, which will fail. Um, but I guess that's, we just have to do that. Get add uh, that set, commit minus am. Uh, this is make tests more specific and robust. Uh, git push origin 1274. OK, do you want to pull those out on your side, Fred? Yeah, sure. Ah, I've just, I think I've probably pushed them to the wrong, yeah. So here we go. They're going, they're going up there now. The dangers of giving things branch names with slight differences to the end of them. Um, yeah, so that should be on, you should be able to pull those down now. And... Okay. Well, I can run the test. Uh, and then what, what I would do, rather than running all the tests, is just run this cucumber test for the uh, map app dot feature. That command again? Yeah, I, I put it in the chat there. It's um, you can start it with bundle exec and then become a features homepage map dot feature. Oh. Hmm. I should run bundle stuff up. That's interesting. Mm -hmm. uh, I think that's you're on the it's your RVM version. Yes. I thought we set your RVM default to go to 231. Yes, I've set the uh, default uh, to be version to 2.3.1, but hmm. I don't know why this error message popped up again. No. Hmm. Well, we can look at that separately.
So next I need to let post. Yes, yeah, so so uh, so that's all running. Yes, so mm -hmm. that so that's all passed, which is great. And then the the code that you've got there looked a little bit outdated. Um, go back to Ruby Mine. Uh, I wondered there if you might need to, to either I failed to check things in or uh, the Ruby Mine is. Um, What's the word? It's not synced against the system. You could re reopen map steps. And yeah, uh, how that look? Do you want to? So if you um, control click on the local support in the uh, left hand navigation pane, uh, or command click or control click, whatever, it should give you a pop up menu of options. Uh, for me, it's control click. When I control click on the local support, yeah, exactly where you're doing it, I get a I get my uh, kind of the right mouse button menu, as they would call it. There you go. And then there's a synchronized local support about three quarters of the way down. And that will chip that will try and you know force your code to be in sync with your file system. Um, nice Yeah. Yeah, then that's where it's not. You just go back to your um, go back to your uh, I forgot what it's called now. Go back to your terminal, and let's see what branch you're on the terminal. So you are on the map API key error rebooted. Okay. Yes. Uh, and I've pushed everything up. And did, did you do git pull upstream that branch name? Pull what? You could pull space upstream. I think it's upstream. U P S T R E M. And then you'll need to put that branch name in. So you could do one two seven four and then hit tab. And then then put an underscore and hit tab again. Okay. Yeah. Now hit return. So maybe did did you did you do some pulling first? Ah, okay, and it was yeah. So I think if you do git stash there, yeah. Ah, or maybe actually no. You probably have to do. I'll type it out for you. You'll need to do rm minus f. Uh, yeah, I need to, the thing is I need to see the error. That you're getting to write this out. So go back to your terminal. Okay. Thanks. Uh, and it's, it's oh, I should know it's uh, underscore rec cache. So if you do this command, uh, mm. so it's remove minus f. We're basically going to get rid of the request cache directory because I think you've got some things in there that will overwrite. Uh, and if you now hit up and you try and do the pull upstream again, it is a directory. Yeah, so, so it, you just hit 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 the up arrow key a few more times to get to the git fetch or git pull upstream branch. Oh. Mm -hmm. No, you just hit the up arrow key. Oh, there you go. Yeah, you got it. So hopefully that should now pull that in. Oh, really? This is the following. Mm -hmm. Ah. Oh, sorry. OK, so I screwed up there. It needs to be minus RF rather than just F. Yeah, so if you hit up twice and you edit the flags there, so it's um, instead of just minus F, it's minus RF. That's it. Yeah, now, now it'll work. Um, and we can go through the details of exactly what happened there if you're interested at some point. I think it's um, there. We go. So now, now run the tests. Now, so the code is updated. But let let's now run the tests again because I think the tests that we ran before were the tests with the old code. So now we want to check that this is running on your machine. Mm. And so that might take a moment. But yeah, we could go to. Um, 
well, while that's running, we can look at the code. And I, I think we now have, uh, you know, a reasonable couple of tests there um, that are quite precise. Um, I guess the only thing that we, there's a couple of things that we should probably do, one of which is maybe refactor that step on like lines 134, 135, 137 have kind of some shared, some things in common. The other thing that we should um, uh, probably do is make sure that the tests fail, you know, uh, in the right way. So that, that's sort of an important thing. It's we, what we've done here is we've refracted the tests, and the tests were going green to start with, and they're still going green. So maybe we actually broke the tests. Um, so th does that does that make? Let, let's maybe do the focus on that first. Does that idea make sense? The idea of breaking the tests to make sure that we see them fail. Yes. So can can you think how we how how might we break? the system now in order to see that the tests really fail in the right way. And don't, don't worry if you're not sure. I know this is a lot of new things for you. So if we want to break, if we want to break and the system and check that the tests fail in the right way, which which file do you think we should make a change in? Uh. The notification now. Yeah, that one you're in now. I think, yeah, we could just try. Well, one thing we could be doing is just we could remove that GMAP key value for URL. Um, or we could play with the contents of the helper to break the helper to check that the two tests still pass. Um, and I think e either one is, is, is fine. Do you, do you want to make a change there or make a change in the helper file? Yeah. So, so what I might do there is I might comment out line 58, for example, and you, there's a shortcut. If you just put your mouse on there and you hit command slash, it'll just comment that line. There you go. And save that. And then, um, I mean, a good test 
of understanding what's going on is thinking, now, which of these two tests on line 92 and line 97 would fail as a result of that being missing? The 1997. Yeah, I think so too. So do you want to just run test 97 and let's check that it fails? Okay. Exactly, yeah. Yeah. So that, that's the question, yeah. What, what do you think that that failed the way that we want to, Fred? Yes. Yeah, I think so too. I Basically, it's saying that it was expecting not to find the CSS uh, with key equals. And I think it, it did. So, uh, yeah, that failed in the right way. So then what we could do is we could put line 58 back in um, and then we could even comment out line 59 well it's interesting isn't it um, yeah we could comment out line 59 59 yeah and save that and then so by extension 92 should fail so we can yeah. run, run the test 92, and hopefully we should see that fail. Yes. Yeah. And so we look at the error message end. Yeah. That looks like it failed in the right way. So that's an important check there. I mean, uh, that, that to make sure that these tests are really doing what we think they're doing. And I think that actually brings us, I mean, we're, we're sort of out of time because of the, we've got the Elixir pairing coming up. Um, I think there is a little bit of refactoring that we could do, but that's not a reason not to get the uh, pull request in. So I've just got set up on my side, and I think there, you know, although you did that important work of checking that the tests failed, there's actually no changes to the code. So this latest, you know, the code that I have on my machine is ready to go. So I've used here a command line version of uh, doing the pull request. What I actually typed was I typed hub pull request minus speed develop. Uh, I have this thing called hub installed that allows me to do it on the command line. Um, you can do it through the web interface um, so here, uh, you can just click, there's a, you know, we'll guide you through it. But I'll just, I think I'll just submit that. I'm putting, um, you know, a little description of what the pull request is, the story that it's addressing. I'll just hit that there. So that will put up a pull request, and uh, we should now see that uh, there. Uh, and that, why is that already breaking? Is it already breaking because, I don't know. It looks like uh, one of our, so I think, I guess we already had the, and why is that breaking there? I don't know why that's breaking there, but that's maybe something to look at on another occasion. I don't know. That's the, I think that's the branch itself. I'm going to kick that off again. See, it feels like the builds are not as reliable as they used to be, but uh, yeah, we're sort of out of time there, um, but we've kind of pretty much finished that up. 
Um, uh, Fred, thanks for working okay. on that with me. Well, thanks, thanks, Sam. No, my thanks. my. So much, so many things here. <laughs> yeah, I mean, there's there's a lot there's a lot going on. It's it's a lot of things. Um, but uh, yeah, hopefully that you know maybe we'll. But that, that ended up being more complex than I wanted to. You saw various parts of the system, um, but maybe we can find you a, a slightly less involved thing to work on next time. But it was it was good to connect up with you. Yeah, sure. Good stuff. Okay. Well, um, I mean, if you have any other questions, you know, maybe we'll take those up in in Slack. Right now, I guess I'll stop the session and I'll start the Elixir one and maybe see you both there. Oh, you mean the Elixir L session? Yeah, uh, I'm, which I'm going to do with Federico, but of course I think you're welcome to tag along. Um, so may maybe see you there. Oh, I know it's it's late for you, um, uh, Fred, and it's gonna, the Elixir will be recorded, and so if we don't see you and you want to get some sleep, no problem at all. Uh, we'll, we'll, I'll check in with you soon. Uh, you can send the, the link in Slack channel. Yeah, it'll come through Slack in a moment, as soon as I start it up. I didn't see. I didn't see the Elixir. Yeah, I haven't started it yet. You'll, you'll <laughs> hold on, and I'll close this hangout, and I'll create a new one, and maybe see you there. All right, bye for now.